My name is David Butler. I'm a Principal Lecturer in Forensic Science at Nottingham Trent University. I'm Program Leader for our Forensic uh, Degree Programs. The CSI effect certainly generates interest among students and then we spend three or four years actually telling them that what they see on TV is not quite the truth. And, uh, things in real life don't happen quite as quickly as that. It's a huge form of advertising for forensic degree programs effectively. Um, you know, it makes our life easier in that it generates interest. And then, you know, if we can get people to come and look at the, uh, the university and the facilities we've got for training forensic science students, then, um, you know, that, that's all to the good. And then we've got Lens to point out that we, have, we are training them to be good scientists and we're using forensics as a vehicle to do so. Somebody um, is the unfortunate victim of a crime and they've obviously had some contact with the television programmes, then they sometimes expect a little bit more from the police or they expect things to happen a lot quicker than what is the normal procedures and how things, uh, how long things actually take. Overall, police investigations take much longer. It's multiple weeks, and even big cases can be months and longer. You know, television doesn't convey that very effectively. And I think sometimes in court, then, you know, when the, the scientist is offering a, a professional, you know, their opinion of the evidence, um, it's sometimes a little bit difficult for the, the jury to fully understand why it's an opinion and it's, you know, it's not just black and white issues. And, you know, multiple alternatives have to be considered and put forward. So I think, you know, the reality is a lot more complex than the, um, the television programs actually lead people to believe. There, there are some examples where um, we, we would say the criminals are becoming more forensically aware. Is what we are seeing is that sometimes um, potential uh, criminals are wearing um, socks over their shoes so they're they footwear marks, they're wearing gloves, etc. And it makes it a little bit more difficult for the police. But some of have a really good um, planned, executed um, commissioning of a crime. I think it's very, very difficult. You're not sure how people are going to react. You're going to react yourself, I suppose. And there's usually forensic evidence there in some form. It's just a challenge for the police to find it. You went to a professional um, forensic lab in the UK. You know, everybody's in surgical scrubs. You, you know, um, you only wear those scrubs once, and then they go for cleaning, and everything's meticulously washed down. And you, you have face masks on. You wear hair nets. Um, you know, double gloves. You, you've got overshoes on. You know, it's. That doesn't make it uh, sexy TV, though, because if you're paying these actors and actresses a lot, an awful lot of money, you want to see their faces. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, um, so it's TV land there rather than their actual practice. Um, in the UK, you know, we have specialist um, forensics people. Now, your crime scene people, their role is to record crime scenes and recover evidence from the crime scene. That evidence then comes back. Some of that will go within the police for examination, footwear marks, for example, fingerprints. Other evidence will then be sent to the um, forensic laboratories, and in the forensic laboratories you have teams of specialists, like DNA, um, your forensic biologists, you'll have people specialising in firearms examination, um, tool marks. No one person, like you see on TV, particularly the American CSI programmes, does everything in the UK. And that again slows down the, the entire process. So sometimes the expectation from the public is, is that, yes, you've made contact with one forensic person, they're going to solve everything and give me all the answers. Well, it doesn't work like that um, in the UK. To be honest, it doesn't really work, uh, work like that in America either. But, uh, you know, and then set them through the uh, very methodical, well-proven process we use in the UK and get them to come to terms with the, the fact that there are many, many individuals with, that their individual skills involved in their major investigations. I mean, the underpinning, you know, those people who put those TV programmes together, the, um, the researchers in the background really do their homework. And a lot of what you see on TV is either current practice or it's practice which, you know, in the future will become um, very common. And if you go back through some of those earlier CSI programs and you look at what they were doing five, you know, six, seven years ago, you know, a lot of that which was what seemed a little bit far-fetched at the time is now, you know, it is reality. A lot more um, equipment available, a lot more advanced techniques. Um, the information we have readily at hand has um, improved. New techniques, new technologies come online. I think it was sometimes a little bit like James Bond with all the gadgets. Now, if you go back to some of those early James Bond films, some of those gadgets which uh, seemed very far-fetched at the time are, are you know, our reality now. Um, so, yes, the sort of good science with a little bit of fantasy, but that fantasy is, again, based on, you know, developments in the pipeline, really.